Carries that actually win against it. They are going to go for the Oriana, take away the Flex. They're going to go for the Senna as well, so they're going to save the topic for now. I'm expecting the Lilia Hecarim trade off eventually, because they're the only real junglers you've got left. And now that they've blind picked the Senna, they can also pick an AD. I would say Ash, but it's UOL, so. Could be something different, could be something like the Swain, <laughs> something like the Heimendinger, because Senna's push is not that good, so something that can just keep running the tower is a really good champ for the side of UOL, so I don't like the blind pick Senna, especially against UOL. Okay, let's find out. The Hecarim is something that has been hovered a couple of times. It is now locked in for an Ananasic, and if that Ziggs is locked in, and it is, that can go mid or bottom. And maybe we expect the bottom? I think PS yeah, definitely bottom. I think yep. PSG maybe made a mistake here. I think going Oriana Hecarim on the one two is just better because now they're now they're kinda stuck. They want to go something like the Lee Sin or they're gonna go for Lilia anyway. If they go Lilia, they're having double mi mid jungle AP, so that's not exactly what you want. But then on the other side, you are running double AD with the Renekton, so that's not as optimal either. So Malphite could be a good pick for them, especially against something like the Zig. So they are gonna go for the Lilia. That is gonna be a double mid jungle AP. So I would much prefer just go Oriana Hecarim, pick AD on three, and then just go to the band phase. So now that they've picked that up, they're going to weigh the band with the cast in, which is what No Man's played against them. Um, V3, who ran the Carthus Galio AP, so they know that the AP mid jungle needs to be banned away, need to take away the cast in. A oh, very, very clever pick up there, or ban away rather. And I still, I'm just going to hold my breath. Um, Gadget has played those mages in the bottom lane very, very well. But technically, that Ziggs could still go middle, right? So let's yep. see how the rest of this draft does play out. Um, UOL will have to complete their draft, obviously, after the first pick on phase two. And with the Leona band away, let's see what the next option is. Maybe that's a, you know, a band to make it a little bit more comfortable for that Ziggs in the bottom lane as well. Yeah, definitely. Ziggs mid. I can see Arena wouldn't be the end of the world, but I'm expecting Gadget to pick this one up. The Northless band does come in, so they're definitely looking to blind pick a support here. Uh, we've seen the prevalence of Braum, Rakan, Alistar, Bard, so. Range support's not the best with Senna. I'm expecting something with melee, something with engage. Save your counter pick on the top lane for a, sort of like a last pick top. Maybe you can look for something cheesy here. I'm expecting a tank or if they go for something like the, the Scion? Or the Recon. I think Scion is definitely one of the better options for them. Um, oh, it's so difficult. So many options. But you need to know where the Ziggs is going first in general. So. And maybe they'll be able to find out once you are well lock this next phase. So jungle start band away. here for Kong Yue. What's left? You've got Rakan. We've got Braum. I'm expecting something more with Engage. So I wouldn't like to see a Braum. Yeah, combo that, especially with the ball delivery system. Yep. And let him jump in with that battle dance. So now do they want to go for something like the well. Thresh? That could be good. Bard could also be really good if they're going to put the Ziggs bot. So depends where the Ziggs is going, really. That's all depends on where and what they want to put where. And it's so difficult as well because Unicorns as a team have been one of the least predictable in terms of their draft. So you've got these like theoretical standard options and then you have to go What's standard for you or well? Yeah, exactly. Is the Ziggs going bot? Maybe it's not. Is it going mid? That's a Bard, so they'd go for the Ziggs Bard. So they could just pick up a strong mid laner here. I'd expect something like the AP, maybe like the Syndra, what we saw from No Man's last time. Or they could put the Ziggs mid and then pick another AD carry. And do you like a Bard into Rakan as well? It's mainly good against the Senna in general. In mobile it carries, you've got the Ash, Senna, Jin, Ziggs as well. So you can just pop the Bard ult on them. They have to the flash or you can get a really good engage. Something like the Twitch we saw last game, Gadget did get caught out a bit. So is that an S real hopper? So. I'm guessing that's going to be an Ezreal bot. So yeah, Ezreal bot, Ziggs top, uh, Ziggs mid, sorry. <laughs> now, uh, PSG have to last pick the top. That's what I wanted to get the point towards. So GP is not a bad champ into the Renekton. You can always W away from the Renekton stun. You have the orange, so the GP ult's going to be kind of nice against the Ziggs as well. You've got the Oriana ball, you've got the Rakan, so you have loads of teamfight AoE. So this GP pick is a pretty good pick, I think. No really strong front line, exactly. though, if you look at that option. And when you're contrasting that to the Renekton and the Hecarim, yeah. Ooh, that could get scary, but then on the same token, you combine Cannon Barrage with Lilia jumping in with those Blooming Blows. There's a lot of options they can play with. Yeah, I definitely think PSG should have looked at something like an Oriana 1-2 to make sure they have some sort of frontline engage, because the Rakan's the only real one diving in the backline. Yes, you can put the ball on Rakan, you can get a good AoE combo with the GP ult, with the Senna as well, but you don't have anyone to step up to walk into the bushes, face check everything, get the vision, force people away because you can flash on them. It's only really Rakan that can do that, whereas on the side of UOL, there's a Renekton and a Hecarim in your face. And not only that, there's a bottle that you have to take into consideration. So. I like UL's draft more in general. Um, they are playing three range champs, they have really good engage, they have the Bard as well, but PSG, if they can get a good Wombo in fights, they can probably one-shot the backline of UL. And is that really the way they play to win this team composition on the side of PSG? Well, not in general. I think playing with the Oriana is the most important, making sure your GP can scale up the Triforce without getting dove. 
by this Renekton Hecarim. I think he should be safe in there. I think just playing defensively across the board is what they have to look at here. You don't have too much playmaking early. GP, it's not like you're going to be able to dive the lane. Yes, GP level 1 to 3 is probably the strongest trader in the game. Maybe you could look something up there in an early game, but in general, I'm looking at level 6 across the board. I'm looking at GP ult, Oriana ult, 4-man, 5-man fights in the bot side, fights over neutral objectives. I don't think there's an, inc an incredible amount of setup for ganks for either side, really, uh, apart from just the Renekton. Yeah, definitely the case. So let's see how it plays out. Kedril definitely leaning towards the UOL draft. Yep. Sheepy has had a They've been fantastic influence on this. The game. drafts have been very surprising. We 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 really felt that Zig was going bottom, but couldn't ignore that because it's UOL, the flexibility of exactly. this team, right? Flexing Oriana as well. They put yes. so much emphasis on draft just to make sure they get winning matchups, whether it's solo lanes or bot. And you can see it here again with the Zig's flex. So yes, Rio can Zig's into mid into the Oriana. So that's what I like about UOL. Their drafts have been crisp, I think. Yes. Whether you think they're good or bad doesn't matter because they're very, very sort of controversial in the way that they just flex things just to get the counter picks. Wins and matter. It, it does work in the end. So. Wins matter, Kedril. Yeah. You can argue if they're good or bad, but when they pick up a win against an opponent, Opponent. Yep. And when you heard Sheepy uh, yesterday's interview, honestly, I thought he actually shared too much, personally. Whereas, like, <laughs> this was the plan, we studied them, we knew on lane swap, we knew they were going to invade. So it was like, it shows a level of preparation yep. and awareness of their opponent's tendencies that they counter. Now, the last time they played PSG, the game started a little bit PSG favored, and then team fights and skirmishes just went UOL's favor entirely. What I heard you saying from the draft was, PSG want to play a little slow, safe. Yeah. Don't put yourself at risk. Well, UOL will be looking then for unforced errors. UOL tower dive. UOL pick fights. UOL are willing to get into your face. Mm -hmm. And if you think of the option of the Super Mega Inferno Bomb, uh, Mega Inferno Bomb, as well as the True Shot Barrage, yeah. That combined with a, you know, onslaught of shadows could be a dead anybody. This is a squishy, squishy team on PSG. So I'm expecting UOL to line them up, call in the, uh, you know, reinforcements, long range abilities and see if they can find any damage. Yeah, I just don't really like the top jungle picks from PSG. I mean, they didn't really have too many options considering the bans. Orn was out, Mordecai's are out, Renek the first pick, Camille was banned. They took away the Hecarim, so... This top jungle of PSG, the problem is they don't really have any CC, no direct sort of point and click stuns, no slows, nothing in general that can help in the early game. So, oh well, that wall's gonna give. Try and get the XP to boss over the wall. I'm not sure if he got it. He might have been in range. So, they're gonna get level two on the, the waves in the first six creeps. So is that another help. game so that they're able to pick up the first ward that's placed down? Uh, I know it's not the most, like, amazing yeah. of things, but it does show a level of just coordination and preparedness again mm -hmm. that I would like to praise. Yeah, it's definitely really useful. If you can get three people share one ward and two of them in the solo laners, then they're always going to get level two off the first wave, but Boss takes not a good trade from Hanabi there. I think the GP level one to three trades is just really, really annoying. Yeah, it's, it's so oppressive with that passive yeah. and, you know, Alex the face or an auto. Um, if you are just joining us, thank you for tuning into World's Plans. Despite the fact these two teams are tied at three wins and one loss, the tiebreaker rules for play-ins groups state that because it is a single round robin, best of one, even with the victory if teams are tied head to head, the winner of the first matchup will get side selection. And this is a battle for first and second seed. UOL beat PSG and UOL lost to Rainbow Seven earlier today. That's why they didn't win the group outright without the need for this game. Now they need to do it again. The winner goes straight to groups. You are well. Boss under some pressure. Look at this. Hanabi just steps yeah. forward with the grasp, shoots him in the face, and backs away. Yeah, no man's. We saw on the graphic there. He has the face rush on Ziggs. Not super common. Normally you like to see things like the comets from the Ziggs. So definitely not playing for lane phase. It will help him escape Conway when he's running at him. The GP ult as well. If the GP ult's coming out, no man's can proc it, get away quickly. So he's playing safe with those runes, especially there. Both junglers pathing all up towards the top side. I think it'll be quite a slow game in general unless Hanabi decides to just keep all in top. Uh, I don't think there'll be too much trading across the board. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that phase rush in the hands of Nomads and UOL, you might be using it to chase forward. Uh, follow the Renekton and the Hecarim. <laughs> use Probably. That, use that um, satchel charge to bounce forward. Um, Is this a red we'll have to see. It does seem to be the he case. He just ghosted. Oh, he's a vision a on him. ghost for a Nana Sick. Remember that vision was denied earlier. No flash available. Rampage is out. Auto and Rampage may be enough. Swirl Seed will force Kong Yue onto another sick, and now they're going to steal away some of the chickens. Oh, no. That's the Satchel that's Charge. That bounces Kong Yue. Remember, he's flashed already. Red buff applied. Bouncing Bomb will not find its target. 
and Kongue escapes with his life. Yeah, Kongue went a bit too far forwards there, and then I see I don't want his Raptors, he just about spotted him trying to do both of the camps at the same time. Pop the Ghost, didn't have the damage in the end, but Kongue flashing away, he doesn't lose too much for it, loses a couple of Raptors and his flash, but it's not the end of the world. And Kajal, the thing it signals to me, you were well attacking the duo, the mid-jungle duo of PSG that has been so influential. Um, the ward denial earlier, the yep. pressure onto the red buff, so it feels to me, and I'm going to be presumptuous, you all want to disrupt Kongue and Uniboy, slow them down, mitigate the level of impact they can bring to this game. Yeah. Definitely. PSG's mid-jungle duo, although they're the subs coming from AHG, who did finish fourth. They are actually carrying this team really heavily. Last last time around, we saw the Kindred, we saw the Syndra, both of yeah. them 10 kills, one death almost, so really, really good performance by them. So they definitely need to step up. Um, I kind of want to argue that the tools they have this game aren't as good as the last couple games they had, the Lilia Oriana. Not much synergy between the two, but maybe it's something they can work with. They have the GP ult coming up at level <laughs> six. There is a pause. There is a brief pause. We'll let you know exactly what that is in a moment. I love the Gambit callout, by the way, from uh, Gadget there in the bottom lane, of course. Unicorns of Love coming from the LCL and the CIS regions. And they took down Gambit uh, in the finals to get you. They've been so dominant all year long. And three I losses. You have heard of three losses all year. Two during the LCL season and one at Worlds. Crazy. That's it. <laughs> three losses the entire year. Not split year. And what I was trying to say before the ad break, uh, before this tiebreaker game, was something that uh, Amazing said on the desk earlier today that I, I absolutely loved. We have to start reframing our expectations. Uh, Machine Osumato, are the Plains team stronger? And he was like, frankly, yes. Like, look at what they're doing. And you're looking at the fourth seed from the LPL, and it's a team that has been inconsistent all year long, coming up against the most dominant LCL roster probably ever. Unicorns of Love are creative in their play. They were exciting. The subs coming out of the PCS and PSG, similar story. They both took down LGD. Yeah, you pointed it out correctly. I just think LGD inconsistency is kind of the key for them. They had a 55% win rate throughout the whole regular season. They finished around sixth, so... They weren't too bad, to be honest. And in the playoffs, they did get 6 0 by Sunning. They beat IG, so they yeah. looked really strong coming into the tournament, taking down the former world champions. But UOL, they just kind of beat them across the boards, especially in the in the last game. They had more creativity. Team fights were more sort of centric, and they played really well as a ball, whereas LGD was split up. Yeah. Even though they did have poor laning phases from the solo lanes, which we kind of expected LGD to come in with the with the sort individual of power. Plays. Yeah, exactly. The individual plays loads such powerhouse solo laners in the in their lane phases. But as a team, UOL just look way more coordinated. Yeah, they really, really do. And there's team fights and skirmishes playing out. It was a pause on the side of PSG Kaiwing. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the reason was, but league officials were investigating, and I hear that hopefully we will be getting back into game very soon. And the pressure is very high in this one. Um, you know, we touched in the draft, and Kadrill really highlighted that from the PSG side, they want to absorb pressure, uh, yeah. buy themselves some time to scale look up. For fights. You need to look for some fights later, like it's a Gangplank, an Orion, and a Lilia. Like, they need some time. They need some items, right? And yep. need to see how well they're going to play out those team fights. Oh, the team. On the other side, Unicorns, I think, with the Renekton and the Hecarim, I feel like they, they might be looking for opportunities a little bit earlier. It also ha will you know, follow the trends that we've seen over the four group stage games thus far. Yeah, and... In both team fights, when the team fights do kick off, I think if you look at both sides of the equation, I think if you look at PSG with the GP ult, where are their spells? As we see a mid gank, this could be a 2v2 if an Anasik goes too far. Well, Satchel Charge actually bounced Uniboy to safety. No the Rampage does a lot of damage, and all of a sudden, here comes Santa, summon a heal as well. Kong Yue's in trouble. No flash, first blood to no man's. The roaming bard setting it up. And that's just reactionary, right? Santas reacted instantly as soon as that mid fight was happening. He was running as soon as the gank was being set up as boss trading hard onto Honeybee there. Won't get his flash in the end, but that's first blood for the side of UOL. No man's that's such a good such a good sort of kill for him here. He can pick up the lost chapter when he goes to base. And Kaiwing was just too late to the play. He reacted way too late. Santas had a faster sort of pathway through the jungle and it was such a good play, and if you watch Santos on the map, you can see he's moving before the play happens. He knows by Ananasic saying, I'm going for a play mid, be ready guys. So Santos instantly moving, you can see he's about 4-5 seconds ahead. It is favours for PSG here, Ananasic could have died, but with the heal, Santos comes in. Kongue didn't expect it, and Kai Wing was just too late. The magical journey through the Dragon Wall Pit as well, yeah. I was watching the minimap for Santas. Yeah. That saved like two or three seconds of travel time, yeah. which you could argue saved Anana six life. Time is a resource in League of Legends, whether it's gold, whether it's time, whether it's vision, all of these things are basically essences of tempo, right? So you could argue Santas got there first, so you had more tempo from both sides. So it all comes down to resources. So yeah, they had more time, they got there first, and that nets them some gold. It's another signal in my read of Unicorn 
Dawn's approach to this game. The fact that Santos was so willing to move despite the wave you know, being pushed into him. Mm -hmm. Remember the invade earlier that a Nanasek and No Man's duo team to go invade that red buff? It really feels to me like the playbook for UOL is do not let Kong Yue and Yunu Boy get ahead. If we can get in their faces, if we can allocate resources together, then all of a sudden we can, you know, look to win the group. And again, LGD flag there <laughs> on the emote. Emotes. Gadget's emote game is He's on chilling. fire. Yeah, and UOL have been really attacking this mid-jungle, like you said, and Ananasik and Nomans are bringing the fight to them. They look for the red buff kill in the early game. They took the Raptors away. Look at this. The jungle support pairing from UOL is just so good. Santas and Ananasik just react so well together and when there's being plays made around the mids, top sides, swapping for Heralds, where they want to go for dragon fights. So, yeah, Kaiwing needs to kind of pair up a bit more with Kongyue to make sure this is more of a 3v3. Yeah, definitely the case. And Gadget just teleport back to lane. He's got himself the tier of the pickaxe. Um, three teleports on the side of UOL to the two on the side of PSG. And there is a TP advantage. No Man's and Boss still holding on to their TPs for now. So if any action does break out, either over the upcoming Rift Herald or potentially Dragon. Um, I always look at Rift Herald when you look at Unicorns of Love. Oh, yeah. They really like to fight around it. And Kedril, you were talking about the draft. Like if PSG, if they're anticipating it, if they're ready for it, Cannon Barrage, the Shockwave, the Lots of uh, zone control. Dawning Shadow can do a lot of work in that pit. So maybe PSG, if they're willing to, could look to fight. Definitely. And I'd be level seven on the GP now. So they have got the GP ult if there is a fight in bot. So PSG, when they get the Rakan 6, like we said, we're looking at level six spikes and Kong Yue sitting behind. Hanabi here, I think he's just trying to help him push out the wave. The wave is actually pushing into Hanabi, so he might be looking for a gank. There is a little bit of setup. They have the cannon brush. Boss has got the flash available. He's got Dominus. Remember, No Man's, if he can move quickly enough, Mega Inferno Bomb in. will come forward. There's the slice and dice, Ruthless Predator. Dawning Shadow for additional support. Defensive flash away. Boss cannot get away from the Swirl C. Now No Man's bouncing bomb onto Kong Yue. The TP was used. And now Unicorns may feel under pressure to go for the Heralds. Look at Santas and Ananasik. They're together again. Kai Wings kind of late again. They're always ready to respond. They were barred portaling up. The TP came in. But it was a good play from PSG. They identified the wave state. It was communicated really well. And No Man's, although he TP'd up, he's a Ziggs. It's not like a LeBlanc or a Syndra who's just going to flash forwards and pop you. He can't really kind of help there. But it was a really good snipe from the side of... Uh, from the side of Hanabi with the GP ult and Kong Yue's E did pick up the kill in the end, but they used the Renekton ult flash. He has no TP now. No man's TP used the Mega Inferno bomb as well, so UOL are going to start this Herald. They have a little bit of tempo on the top side of the map because Hanabi had the base, so he had a lot of Golden's inventory, meaning he couldn't fight. He didn't have the GP ult either, so the fact that they moved here with the jungle support, Boss also TPing mid to get the push. Two waves pushed in, free Herald. So, Unicorns of Love, um, a lot of resources invested. They don't get the counter kill, but they can at least use the Herald to unlock some more plates and gold. Look at the defensive wards here on the side of PSG inside that river entrance to the Raptor camp and Red Buff. A lot of vision, anticipating any sort of invade. They can Herald top right now. The tower will die. They have the Ziggs W, right? So that'll kill at least one plate guaranteed. So No Man's gonna pick up a full tower here, I think. So. This Ziggs is going to be so strong, and although the Ziggs is a different kind of pressure from most mid laners, like if a Cinder is ahead, if a LeBlanc is ahead, Unified would have to be really scared. But with the Ziggs, it's more about wave clear. You have infinite wave clear from the side of UOL now, the Ziggs ahead. You're going to have so much poke damage as well, so it's another kind of beast that you have to deal with even against these champions like Ziggs. So no, maybe no one can get the second tower if you save the W and the Herald hits. Well, let's find out. That one does tag. Satchel charge is available. Does he throw it out? A couple more autos. I no, find it just enough. yet. An explosive minefield thrown out. And while this is going on, by the way, uh, Boss is in the mid lane, trying to wave clear up against Uni Boy. I saw Santas making his way up there. Kong Yue on this Lilia, 65 farm already secured and will start the first dragon in the game in 10 minutes. It feels like you all will be too late to this part. Yeah, PSG had the bot push, Hananasik helped top to try and get the tower, try and get the push out to No Man so Hanami couldn't freeze. PSG answer well, go for the dragon, try to get something in bot side. If the dragon wasn't up, perhaps try to do something on gadget, try and force him out, they have no TPs, but good play from PSG, they identified a misstep from Nanasek there, getting a bit greedy on the top side, but UOL's in a really good spot. No man's back in mid now. He's got Luden's Echo. Uniboy is gone for the tier, so he's scaling up, but this Ziggs is going to be able to one-shot the waves and just yes. keep going into Fog of War, take all these pinks that PSG have across the river, and then it's the side lanes that are going to struggle. 1,500 gold advantage at 10 minutes. Despite losing the first dragon, Unicorns of Love got that Herald, got themselves the tower in the top lane, and they've got themselves Honestly, like a, a, a higher level of coordination in the decision making. Look, they're setting up for a dive. Mid to bolt, exactly. No man's had the mid push. Unified kind of smells this. 
timing is really far this away. Is He's so probably scary. Won. Flash and heal available. Good Cosmic night. binding into the wall. And honestly, that Mega Inferno Bomb was not even needed. He just got obliterated underneath the tower. Also got the Cannon Barrage out of Hanami, by the way. Yep. So that is a very big cooldown. That's going to allow your well to play even more emboldened for the next minute or two. Yeah, Unified should definitely have smelled that play coming. Kaiwing kind of ran through mid from base there, so he didn't get the bot in time. But Hanabi does have TP coming up. Boss oh. doesn't. So there is sort of like a map advantage there for them on the bot side. But they're going to lose so much playthings. And if they can get No Man's to push in mid and rotate bot, he can just one-shot this tower with his W. No doubt about it. The three-minute timer for the next Dragon Swellseed won't find the target. And Gadget will get it's at least a plate boss. or two. It's going to go to blue, I think. Look at this situation. Now, PSG, they have to find a way back in. Kedril, you specifically said in draft, you don't really want to see them fall behind. They do have to try to absorb some pressure. At what point do you start getting terrified for them? Because we know the scaling on a GP, an Oriana, a Senna. We know with time they can be strong, but they're down two, two and a half thousand gold. And it starts to get to that point where the deficit is too much to overcome. Yeah, the thing with PSG's comp is their whole top side picks are full scaling. There's no playmaking. I mean, Lilia, you can make plays level one, you can look for early invades, but that didn't happen essentially. So they have no setup. All of their spells are kind of flashable, so you don't really have any solidified engage. So they can't really look for many plays. I mean, Hanabi, I'd like to see him freeze top wave, try and deny boss some creeps. He has the TP if boss runs towards bot side. Try to TP in and just defend the play and keep the top ways frozen. So they need to look for gold adventures in different ways. I don't think they're going to win fights at this point in the game unless they can get a really good wombo combo because they don't have any setup. Look at the OL's vision. Kai Wing's contesting vision on his side of the map, so he can't really get the wards down. And PSG need to find some kind of engage. I mean, no, you all have all their flashes up almost. The dragon's in two minutes thirty, and maybe could that they, could be their opening. Could they fight in the dragon pit again? Cannon Barrage, Shockwave. You know, it's a little bit more of a controlled situation. And then as it goes forward, True Shot Barrage, Tags, Unified. Megan Furnabomb's already been thrown down. Now Kong Yue and Uniboy, they're inside the river. It's a challenging spike, magical journey. In. That gets him out to safety. That's a sleeping horsey as Ananasic goes down. Teleport comes out as well. Kai Wing gets tagged against the wall with the Cosmic Binding. So PSG, they find a pick, they find a kill, but it did cost a couple of ultimates and summoner spells. Yeah, good play from PSG. I mean, if you can't make plays yourself, just play on the enemy mistakes, right? Ananasic dives way too deep there. Kai Wing tried to punish it. I think Ananasic played it really well to sort of dive away from the Rakanult, but in the end, PSG just collapsed really well. I think the TP from Hanabi was a bit too much, perhaps, but it's a it's a kill in the end, right? That's yeah. what you need when you're your PSG. You need to get the kills, you need to get gold on your carries, get some scaling, and just well played from PSG overall, punishing the mistakes, and you just need to keep doing that. All right, let's see how many more mistakes Unicorns of Love make. All the teams in Group A currently watching this game very closely because the loser will play second seed, and this is Ananasi going on Unicorn. Yeah, look at the mid prior as well. I mean, Santas is in the river, but... And Uniboy just collapsing way too fast. He does dodge away from the Rakanal, thinks he can get Unified, but now he's kind of stuck. Kongri and Uniboy come down. They do both flash on towards him, and he gets CC'd up, doesn't have any escape, takes taken down, and this TP from Hanabi, not a fan. I'd like to keep pushing out top, but in the end, he does have the Cannon Barrage for the next fight. Boss looking to try get some damage on Kongri. He's got that Blade of the Rune King completed. Has been sitting on it for a little while, and continues to shove that wave in. Down 10 CS, um, Hanabi's got the Trinity Force picked up. Look at the damage coming out here. Ludens plus the needlessly large rod. <laughs> Defensive satchel. He's playing with them. <laughs> yep. Really, really playing with fire. Yeah. But you can see the level of confidence that No Man says. Even though he got, you know, dunked in lane by Shie, um, his kryptonite of Silas, by the way. Uh, this time around, no kryptonite, and he's just playing all the way forward with all the support from Ananasic and Santa. Yeah, look at his, look at his gold. He got top tower, he got bot tower as well. 10 platings to zero from the side of PSG. 1.6k gold, and that's all to do with No Man's. He got top tower, he got bot tower, he got mid plates as well. So look at his items. He has a Needless and an Aether Wisp yes. over a Uniboy. So with this dragon coming up in 20 seconds, boss is pushing in top. Hanabi can't join the fight, so I think PSG's gonna have to give this. There's no TP on Hanabi. Boss does, so if PSG go in here, they're gonna lose. Tempered Fate doesn't find its target. Teleport available, as you've already mentioned. He has good TP flank wards as well. He's gonna push forward. Now, where does Boss go? He's currently staring down the barrel of Hanabi, if you look at the mini-map. And PSG, I think, wisely start to back away. Hanabi's moving down now, but I think it's too late. Boss is kind of hovering around, ready to TP. He doesn't have any TP wards anymore. And Unified's not with the team. Him. He's in the bottom lane, so yeah, even if the fight breaks out, it's gonna be an ultimate that comes out, nothing else. Ocean what? Soul. Soul. Ocean Soul is huge. Oof. That is huge. You do not want to give Ocean Soul to Zig Ezreal. Yeah, now looking at the bot wave as well, UOL can just run through mid to Herald. Bot wave's frozen. Unified needs to push it out, try and get to deny some creeps there. But UOL, Dragon to Herald, they should be able to pick this one up. And they could use a Herald mid, but I think Ziggs is going to be able to take that quite easily. So that Herald's going to be really useful for tier twos. And PSG, Unified, did drop the bot wave. He's moving up. They have the Cannon Barrage. Maybe they want to contest this Herald. Unicorns of Love. 
Managing to put some pressure on. Kyrie has the ball. Will find himself that swell suit and gadget, but holds on to his lullaby. And we know you are well are happy to fight in the fifth. But look at this again. PSG, they step forward, they think about it, waiting for the initiation. True Shot Barrage doesn't do really a lot of damage, and the Shockwave still fishing for opportunities. Who Swell can go first? Who can go first between. inside of PSG? Boom! From that Mega Inferno Bomb. What's that? 30, 40% HP across the board yeah. on everyone that attacked. And it just extends that. Unicorns of Love, they're setting themselves up for a slot in groups. Yeah, PSG just don't have the answers for UOL's like sort of playmaking, right? They can dive bot, they can start Terrell, they can start Drake. They don't have enough tools to s just push them off. You could drop the cannon barrage, but if Kaiwin goes in first, he's just going to get popped before your team can respond. So, and, it, and then the other side of the coin is if you don't go in, then they can just poke you out with the zigs and the bard, right? So, and the Ezreal as well. So, UOL's comp is just so strong around these neutral objectives, and PSG need to find a, a way to get the fight started, look for some kind of flank, and now no man's sitting on the two items. He's gonna, he's gonna poke you out. Let me try. Let me try my best casual impression. Is that illegal? That is, is completely illegal. <laughs> I can't do your accent at all. But I mean, Oblivion Orb, Ludens, Sork Shoes at 16 and a half minutes, 172 wait, CS. Wait, is that Senna building Black Lever? If so, what do you make of that? Illegal, you just said it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he has double AP mid jungle and a Rakan. Oh, so, why that's would you do that? Oh, that's a knockout from Kyrie, but there's no follow up. That's a good question. I think. Uh, beaten by Boris? Yeah, beaten by Boris. Beaten I think by that's, Boris? That's, that, that's probably going to be a situation. Let's see how they're built. But look at the gold yeah. lead in mid, almost 3,000 gold difference. Even though he's only 10 CS up, he's taken three towers. Yeah, all the plates. I mean, it was 10 plates at 15 yeah. minutes, right? Uh, three towers to zero. But that's what you would expect when you have a Ziggs. Yep. That's your wave pushing power. And until the last lock in, that Ziggs could have gone bot too. So again, this flexibility from UOL, the UOL drafting. Yep. Honestly, everyone in Group A is going to be thankful that UOL are not in the best of fives because it is an unenviable task to try to draft against this team yep. in a BO5. Yeah, and they just move around the map so well with No Man's. He's taking all these towers. Maybe they can get in the top two, but he's in a bit of a risky position. They're all playing on top side. Gadget's playing weak side Ezreal, freezing bot waves, ready with TP to engage if this thing happens. Oh, devastating charge into the wall. Cannon Barrage comes out. Here comes Unified. Dominus to buy some time. Fantastic charm from Kaiwing. The teleports come out. Tempered Fate will push PSG back, and now the five man stack are under PSG threat. Have to fight this. The shockwave's going to be huge if he can find a target. Still a 3,000 gold deficit, but look at the Unicorns. They are grouped up and stacked. Hextech Minefield slowing people down. Mega Inferno Bomb is available if PSG continue the siege, but they didn't. But that is big. Two, one teleport actually. It was just Gadget that TP'd into the top lane. Yeah, and Boss's Flash as well. I thought PSG could get way more than that. Kaiwing had such a good position. They got a really good wombo with the Senult, but there just wasn't enough damage to finish anyone off. And UOL, they kind of get away with that one. I think they could have lost a few members there for that play. It was too much. And Boris claims another victim with the Black Cleaver on Renekton. Black Cleaver on Renekton as well. Another victim. Oh, your Ziggs is so far ahead. I mean, look, one of the things that's interesting is I think that gold lead that you all have mm -hmm. is what's accrued them that um, margin of error. Yep. You know, had they not been so far ahead, had Boss not been able to get the support so quickly, it could have turned. But it's 20 minutes in, one dragon apiece. It's still a 3k gold lead. And PSG still have to defend this insanely fed farm Ziggs. Yeah, this No Man's been taking over the map. He's just running around clearing every wave. PSG, like you saw, they didn't get any plates, and that's kind of down to No Man's and Ananasic, putting some aggression towards the mid-jungle side of things, using Santas to roam to the 3v3 mid plays more. The Herald will crash into top tier two, hopefully, to take that Eventually. One down. Eventually. Shelly will get there I hope, eventually. I hope the but, observers uh, follow. So I think... But actually, the dragon's spawning in 30 seconds, so Hanabi's going to have to clear the Herald the next wave, and then he should be able to keep it. I know you're new to the cast today, Mark, but I do need to correct you. The first Rift Herald, Shelly. Oh. I think the second one, Sheila. Oh, really? Now, I, I'm, I'm going to get yelled at on Twitter, and I apologize for not knowing that, but they have different, they're different people, right? You okay. can't just assume Fair enough. it's True. the same one, right? And I'm pretty confident it's Shelly and Sheila, and, and if not, um, I apologize to everyone at home. Okay, I'll take Didn't even one. make it to the tower, you know? Dropped out where it was. But let's turn attention to the third dragon. Ocean, Shockwave, that's going to throw him down onto Gadget, and he's forced to run for his life. Yeah, I mean, PSG could cross map here. They have a good top wave. They could have played for top tier one, but Hanabi's moved all the way down here, so they want to contest the second dragon from the side of UOL. I'm not sure if it's the best decision. You can drop the second dragon, try to get some gold, get some top side vision, get the tier one top, but they're looking for a fight. They don't have anyone to face check, but Kaiwing doesn't have flash. Bartle. Tempered Fate doesn't find its target. Santas hasn't been able to 
have the level of impact that you would hope out of those bard ultis, but No Man's bouncing bombs and those minefields have made it very difficult for PSG to push forward until they got mid-control. As soon as that wave crashed against the tower, they were able to step in. But look now, zoned away, True Shot Barrage, Mega Inferno Bomb, and they're too low to fight. And Ananasix looking for a flank here, and Abby's out of position. He absolutely is. Devastating charge backwards, Cosmic Binding against the wall. He ate an orange, and it's okay, but not long until the Onslaught of Shadows locks him down. Magical Journey to safety, that allows Santos to escape. And Boss is looking for a target to slam the Ruthless Predator onto. PSG lose one, Unicorns gain control, and they'll look for the second dragon. Yeah, and when it comes to these dragon stare downs at the 15 to 25 minute mark, all you really care about in terms of gold is the side waves. UOL had a bot pushing wave, so they went towards bot side, they wanted to crash before signing Drake. And PSG's top wave is bouncing into UOL, so they're bleeding resources top. They lost the bot wave as well, they lost the dragon, they lost Hanabi, so not a good setup from the side of PSG. I'd like to see more cross mapping coming from them, because it's only the second Drake, you really need to fight the third and the fourth in general, especially on Ocean Soul. But now they need to fix top wave, they need to catch bot wave, and just re establish some vision around this Baron. Well, we have a little bit of time before we see any contest over either the vision of the objectives. Quick history lesson for any of our viewers that are watching. The last time the LCL, it's the Commonwealth of Independent States League, was in the main group stage at the World Championship was 2016 with Albus Knox Luna. They managed to advance to the quarterfinals. Since the introduction of the play-in stage, Gambit lost to Cloud9 in 2018 in Game 5, failing to qualify. Last year, Unicorns of Love lost to Splice in Game 5, yep. unable to qualify. And the Unicorns of Love are a Nexus kill away from being the next LCL team to advance to groups without even the need for a BO5. This is an organization that has lost at the final hurdle last year, that lost at the regional qualifiers as many times as they entered. Yep. And Unicorns of Love have got a significant lead and are in position to go to groups. Yeah, coming into this game, if they do win this and go to groups, Albus Knox made it to quarterfinals, so maybe UL can do the same. I mean, their performance in the in the planes has been pretty much flawless, apart from that one game they did get a bit stomped. You could argue it was more draft diffy in the driffy. Um, I mean, they definitely will argue that, <laughs> young man, because uh, it's much easier pill to swallow. Yeah. But Rainbow Seven definitely showed up. So far, the only definitely. loss on UOL's docket, and I think as you explained, um, setting up for Baron, setting up for the next uh, Dragon, the fact PSG got the first Drake of the game, or at least got the Infernal Drake, it just buys them those five extra minutes to farm, those five extra minutes to try and find a mistake to punish. Yeah, and Gadget's playing weak side Esriel again. He's a bit scared to catch top wave. He doesn't see Uniboy and Conue, but he has the TP, so they want to play towards the bot side. I think Hanabi doesn't have the flash, or so No Man's, this Ziggs can just keep keep the mid push no matter what. Santas can run wherever he wants to. They want to play top side and punish Uniboy, or do they want to run bot side and get this tier two bot and punish Hanabi? They have the portal, so if he steps up too far, he can get engaged on it. PSG's hovering top side. Tempered Fate goes out. That's going to allow Hanabi to be the target. Teleport as well. Dominus already thrown down. Dominic Shadow and Cannon Barrage. Nearly zero HP loss on the side of the UOL. They get Hanabi, they get a TP, they get multiple ultimates, and now with a satchel charge, they get the tower as well. That was frankly beautiful. That is clean decision making from UOL. Most teams, past 20 minutes, they play towards the Baron, they get the vision, they keep threatening the Baron starts, trying to pick them off if they try to face check around the Baron. But the UOL swap it up, they put their Estrial top, he's the weak side, he has the TP, he pushed out the waves. No man's, it's a 1 3 1, he pushes in mid, and then they just go on Hanabi. He has no flash, he gets absolutely popped into the stun, into the Ziggsult, and then. Gadget, as soon as he sees Uniboy react to the TP, he reacts himself. So no matter what, it's a number advantage for UL. And they play it really clean. 25 minutes into the game, Uniboy and Kongyue, 2-1-0, 0-0-1. That might be their worst performance at this game throughout groups. Yeah. And, and you have to give credit to UL because they focus them. They put pressure on those two players, Cable. Definitely, I agree. But I just think the tools that PSG have drafted for themselves here, there's just not enough to, not enough to play with. See the gold graph is... Very consistently going up, and yep. Boss is always going to have the side push. Gadget's always going to have the side push. No man's always going to have the mid push. As so long as they don't over overstep and get arrested by the weak side police, I think they should be able to get every objective. <laughs> arrested by the weak side police. I really like that one. Um, who else can PSG hire from the police force or whatever to help them out? Because yes, you have to punish mistakes, but when you're down 6k, there's no margin for error. Can they even fight this next dragon? Well, they're going to have to. I mean, Gadget is split pushing alone, so everything's kind of falling apart from PSG. They have no lanes of prio. Look at their vision. They have some wards scattered on the bot side of the map, but UL's playing top side. And then is hovering at the bot side as well, so Hanabi can't push. No Man's is untouchable in mid. He has the flash, he has W, he can get away whenever he needs. And 
and Gadget's just as safe as No Man's, so PSG need to find somewhere to target, put all their resource into it, but it looks like Yuel's gonna do it first. Yeah, gonna chase down, as Blade of the Ring King slow onto Hanabi, he's eaten the orange, that's a devastating charge backwards. Rampage off the Rampage, they get themselves one kill. Kong Yue will get some damage onto Boss, it looks like he may just about go down, not yet. The shield no comes man. out and keeps him alive. Yeah. Uniboy finds No Man's, that's gigantic, that's and the shutdown, the overchase, the overcharge, another kill. the overexcited Unicorns are taken down by PSG, and now Santa is running for his life. Chase. Magical journey will buy some time. Cosmic finding not needed as a tempered fate will lock up two. Unified. Here comes Unified. The lasso will not find a target, but the knockup will, and Kong Yue takes him out. Gets the dragon, but at the cost of an inhibitor. But it's definitely worth it for PSG. You said it correctly. Just punish the mistakes, and that's exactly what they did. UOL went for the same play that they did earlier on, but Hanabi, he just about lived enough for Kaiwing to come in. Uniboy solo killed No Man's on the side, and now they're turning they towards Baron. Baron. There's 20 seconds on Boss for his TP, 10 seconds on No Man's for his PP too, but PSG don't have huge amounts of Baron damage. Gadget needs to do something. The TP's coming in from Hanabi, so this is going to be another fight. I think Boss um, and No Man's are coming in too as well soon. Believable. No ways Gadget can steal this. True Shop Rush just damage came up. And available teleport is coming in. True Shop Barrage was sidestepped by everybody. No Man's Mega it? Inferno Bomb is available. It's invisible. He He's just throwing something in. Mega Ooh. Inferno Bomb inside the pit and it is picked up by PSG. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, it may have just started. Boss is continuing to chase another down. Kill. Another That's shutdown. Another kill onto Gadget. Now another one onto Boss. PSG close the gold gap. Get themselves Can I get the, the Baron. And now they're going to turn towards the Dragon. I thought they were going to go for Dragon, but instead they went Baron. Yeah, they went for Baron. They had so much tempo. They had 10, 20 seconds on UOL. They judged it perfectly. They had just enough damage to finish it and take the fight afterwards. So really well played from the side of PSG. That's how you punish mistakes. UOL overstepped and PSG turned it into a huge advantage. They've only brought the gold, up, gold back to 2k deficit. They're looking at the third Dragon and No Man's, he has the flash. He's trying to poke them out. He's trying to do the best he can. A lot of mana to work with. Death Cap was picked up as well. Can you see it? Megan Inferno Bomb is on cooldown. Onslaught of Shadows is available from a Nana Sick as well. The Dragon Ooh. will reset, but it's picked up Uniboy got it. by PSG. Uniboy 303. By the way, just after I flamed his score line and involvement, he and Kong Yue find a massive way back into the game. Yeah, you just gave them the buff that they needed. I mean, cast a curse. They cast a buff in this case towards <laughs> PSG, but. The whole problem that you all have now is not only have you thrown, you've given away your third trick, you've given away Baron, so you can't play for that. What can you play for now is UOL. They go for Hanabi again, the same sort of play, there's no tower, the ult misses from Ananasik. Yeah, it sucks, but they do manage to pop in, but PSG just respond really well. Kaiwe and Kongiwe, they do enough damage to just chunk out boss. Santas kind of left No Man's alone, he should have brought him with him, like a buddy system, they should have stayed together, but as soon as Uniboy picks him up, Ananasik's way too deep, he gets, he gets cut down and then Boss fails the E over the wall. Regardless, I think he would have died because Unified was coming down as well. So, huge throw from UOL and PSG have punished it so well. And going back to my point, what can UOL do now? They're going to bleed top waves because of the inhib. They can play on mid bot side, but there's no real objectives for like four or five minutes. And also remember, despite how much gold is in No Man's inventory, Baron Empowered Minions are not going to care about his bouncing bombs. It's going to be very difficult. Unicorns still have a gold lead. And PSG, you could see Glenn and the support staff backstage exceptionally excited. Also keep in mind that with Supers pushing into the top lane, that's going to allow PSG to make up some of this lost farm, make up some of this additional gold, and now it's going to be up to PSG. They're still playing from a deficit. This has neutralized the game to an even-ish state. Yeah, PSG, you all have all their tier ones up, so if they can chunk them down and get them without getting caught, I think the main thing that PSG need to avoid is grouping up too much and pushing mid too hard because they can get collapsed on. If they do that, they lose their Baron buffs and they've lost their lead that they've acquired from the throw. So poking and prodding at these tier ones is exactly what they need to do. It's essentially free gold on the map, so PSG dropping sides there, making sure they get the mid tower. Now they need to catch the sides and just keep scaling. This Oriana is getting so strong. Absolutely the case, and those Mega Inferno Bombs, they need to find their targets. And uh, Santa's Morello and Oriana. <laughs> tempered fates, they need to find their targets. Morello and Oriana, is that good or bad? I couldn't tell from your facial reaction. Well, Hecarim and Renekton do have some healing, they have the Bard as well. I'll let it slide this time, but I think Leandris would have So you think better. Boris is still smiling, but it wasn't a complete ripple? Boris is a scam god, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Black Cleaver was completed by uh, Unified, by the way, as it was on Boss. Ghostblade picked up there for Hanabi. They're looking for an engage. With 30 minutes in, Santa's looking for the Cosmic Binding. Two and a half minutes till the next ocean is not for Sol yet. As yep. Both teams have two dragons, but with supers in the top lane, Unicorns may be looking to shove the bottom and try to get to that inhibit attack. I mean, the biggest problem now is the inhib top they took earlier. Look at Boss's level, level 15 Renekton. Hanabi's level 17 when he was the one losing lane. He lost his tier one. He's come back into the game and Unified gets hit by the Bartle. Tempered Fate, I think, was blocked by the Hourglass of Unified or the stopwatch rather. There it popped just a second ago. Now Unified 
side, trying to get some damage down. They can't follow up. This is Can a 4v5. And Shockwave did everything they needed. PSG are back in this game. That was a 4v5. No man's got hit by the Oriental as soon as the fight started, so he had to jump out. Boss also had to jump out as well, so Ananasik kind of ran forward. He looked for the fight, but... Cajun PSG is looking so it? strong. P oh, PSG coming back to win this game. Oh, man, I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what's going on right now, but... The whole problem that PSG have right now is the Oriana items aren't scaling items. He doesn't have Void Staff yet, he doesn't have the Rabidon. So although he is strong and he has caught up a lot, his AP and his stats aren't as high as they should be. But Hanabi level 17, Uniboy level 17, Kong Yue is a level up, so they've definitely come back into this game. This is definitely anyone's game now. The gold's even, and PSG have so many tier ones they can take. Now let's talk about the status of the game. Three, four items being completed. Um, it's a favorite question of any play-by-player -play around the planet. Scaling, late game tools. Do you prefer the options on PSG at this stage of the game? I would say UOL's comp, Renekton, Hecarim, Ziggs. These three champions scale towards the mid game, two or three items. I think towards the later stages, they fall off a bit, definitely. Hecarim can be useful if he does get Spirit Passage, Death Stance, but they're very expensive items. Gadget is the late game insurance for the side of UOL. He's got the three items now. He's building towards something like some MMR here to stop the Shockwave from taking him down, but PSG, Oriana scales really well. She's really strong right now. Kong Yue, I think he's building towards something like a random wins right now or a dead man, so he'll be really, really impactful. And the GP of Hanabi is going to be insanely strong with that GP ult. So short answer is yes. Long answer gave all the context you wanted. I would favor 40, PSG. 40 seconds until the ocean break. And look at the vision, by the way. A fair amount for UL to play with. They'll see PSG moving forward. But it is also 38 seconds to Baron. So PSG may be able to threaten that. I don't know if they've got the quickest Baron in the world. But as it stands, Unicorn's back away. And remember, Cage will sit in the draft. No one to really Oh, there it is. So you just initiate. That's the flash engage He's from Kaiwing. Finds They're all the dead. kill onto Nomads. A follow-up onto Santos as well. Why bother face checking when you can just hard engage? Boss stays alive long enough to scare Kong Yue away. Slices, Ooh. dices, and Unified manages to send him back. Make an end. Are you mad? It's bro? over. This could be it. They're going to be pushing into the base. 40, 50 second death timers. And the inhibitor is done. PSG. They're gonna win the group! They have a wave, Santas is in 15, but he's not enough wave carry. He has the Bard ult, so he'll probably use those on the Nexus Towers, but PSG, they can end. It's a 5 for 0, and that's this the Wombo combo we wanted. Unbelievable! PSG Talon, the second seed from the PCS, forced to play Bard with ult. substitutes because of COVID. They don't care. They step up massive. And in a surprise to the world, PSG take down UOL and advance to the group stage at World 2020. PSG are in groups. I am speechless. I can't believe UOL threw that game. PSG, they finished first in the group. They're going to group stage with three substitutes. From January until September 26th, the Unicorns of Love had lost two games. Today on September 27th, they have lost two games. And it means they will take the second seed in groups and they will face off against the winner of the third and fourth seed from Group A. The Unicorns had a 6,000 gold lead at one point. It was six towers to zero, Trevor. They had. To the third Drake coming up, Ocean Soul, they had everything they needed. But one mistake, one overextension in bot led to the Baron. And then as soon as it led to the Baron, they just scaled up enough to just get that one Bombo combo they needed. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Congratulations, PSG. Welcome to groups River and Tank. Good luck. Throughout World MasterCard is highlighting the fans, cheering from around the globe. And today we say hi to Scott from Denver, Colorado. Scott always wanted to be competitive and strive to be the best when gaming. And League of Legends has provided that. Every world, Scott supports the three North American representatives. So this year, FlyQuest, Team Liquid, and TSM. He'll be cheering for TL as they look to make groups tomorrow. Uh, for Group B, we have one game left. It's V3 and LG. They face off in just a few minutes. I'm speechless. Man, I, I, I can't I believe what's happening. LGD is playing the next game, and if they lose, they're out. And PSG just finished first. How? How? They had no right to win that game. We will be Man. back with the last tiebreaker of the day. Congratulations to PSG Talent. I, I mean, the Ziggs that was a monster.